Hi guys, it's Matt, the Magman, coming to you live from my, well, my home. It's kind of where I live. I'm, I'm in the middle of refurnishing. So today, what I really wanted to talk to you about um, is some of, something that's very close to my heart when we're, we're mucking about with the mag formers, which is um, a, a little bit of a mathematical history. I'm going to take you back in time a little bit, uh, back to the early Greeks there lived a really cool guy called Plato. This, this, this guy, he was like the grandfather of, uh, of well, he, he founded the world's first university. He's kind of that kind of clever, cool, cool, cool chap. And he is famous for kind of coming up with five shapes. And these shapes are considered the most pure and uh, uh, most beautiful shapes you can kind of make in geometry. Cool bit of mathematics. So. Of these shapes, which are called the Platonic solids, named after Mr. Plato, the first one we come across is called a tetrahedron. Tetrahedron, very, very cool shape. Kind of looks, well, it's made out of triangles, equilateral triangles. But when we're building it from its net, it looks like that, you see? And then by folding up the edges, I make the first of my platonic solids, the tetrahedron. Very, very pretty, very attractive. I like this one a lot. Now, what you've got next is a shape called the octahedron, and uh, very much like an, an octopus that has eight legs, the octahedron has eight faces. Um, and our net looks a little bit like a, I always think it looks like a crown. Do you know, it's like you could punk that on your head and you have the little spiky things. But if I fold those edges up and with any luck just pull that straight up, oh, I've made myself a little uh, octahedron, eight sided platonic solid. Very, very cool. Now, just before I do any more, I did want to talk to you very briefly about what makes a 3D shape. So yeah, 3D shape, three dimensions, length, breadth, and width. This is, of course, hopefully you remember, a cube, which is the third of the platonic solids. And as a solid, it's made up of three things. I know I said length, breadth, and width, but uh, the, the words we're using would be the face. And I'll do that again now. The face, the edge, and the vertex or the vertices or the corner or the point. And these are your three parts of a, of a three dimensional shape. So here we are, that is the cube. Humble, humble shape, very, very attractive. Coming up next is uh, probably everybody's favorite. Um, it's not my favorite, I have another favorite, but this, this could potentially be everybody's favorite. I'm actually gonna move those to the side so you can see what I'm doing. This is a shape that everybody knows the name of, but not everybody knows, um, knows what it looks like. This is the uh, ever mysterious dodecahedron. This is a lovely sounding name, dodecahedron. This comes from uh, two Greek words, do and deca. You see, do means two and deca means 10. And in Greek, it's like a two and ten hedron, which gives this 12 faces. We have our dodecahedron, glorious shape. I'm going to plunk that one over there. And last but not least is my favourite, which is called the I. Icosahedron, or icosahedron, depends how you pronounce it. But uh, this is a 20-sided shape made entirely out of equilateral triangles. Now, what makes the platonic solids so special is that every single one of these shapes is made only using one regular polygon. Now again, if you can't quite remember or you don't know, a polygon is a two-dimensional shape. A polyhedron is a three-dimensional shape. So using a regular polygon, 
Now, out of your regular polygons, you've literally only got four. You've got the uh, equilateral triangle, which looks like that. You have the square, that looks like that. You have the pentagon, pentagon, five shaped. And we have finally the, there it is, I knew it was there somewhere, the hexagon, six sided shape. Now, unfortunately, you can't just use hexagons to make a 3D shape, it doesn't work. So all of your protonic solids are used, or made, only using either a triangle, a pentagon, or a hexagon. Here's another interesting thing about these shapes. Every single one is perfectly symmetrical, um, and so perfectly in proportion with each other that if I were to roll any one of them, the chances of it landing on any one of the other faces is completely equal. See, your platonic solids, your face, your edge, and your vertices are all equal, which is why throughout history, every single one of these shapes has been used as a, as a die or dice in a game of chance. Uh, one final thing, which I think is super cool, is any one of these shapes would fit perfectly in a circle or a sphere. So if any one of these, you put them in a perfect bubble, the corners or the vertices would touch the inside of that bubble perfectly. Now, I'm not the only one who thinks these shapes are amazing. The ancient Greeks, they thought these shapes were the coolest thing on the planet, which is why they actually associated each one of these shapes with an element. <sighs> Indeed, the elements. Um, for example, the tetrahedron was fire. Fire element, very, very cool. The uh, cube, or the hexahedron, is sometimes what it's also called, was uh, earth. Mm, very nice, earth. The octahedron, eight-sided shape, was uh, air, I think, air, yes. And the icosahedron was water, see like that. Now it was in fact the uh, dodecahedron, which was seen as the fifth element, or the ether, the spirit, the, the oh, Fugazi, what have you. But these are the five platonic solids. Super, super cool. Uh, some of the most beautiful and perfect shapes you are ever likely to come across. Mm -hmm.